Good evening everybody, Calm Biker here. Just in the middle of a nice evening ride, just stopped to clean the visor. And I'm about to head home before it gets dark, because it's the dark visor again. It's the only problem with evening rides. The dark visor is best for the low sun. But um, it does mean you have to cut your ride short. Unless you've got somewhere to put a spare visor. Which I haven't. Anyway, I thought I'd record a quick video on my way back. I've had my fun bit of my ride, I'm on me slow a bit now where it's a lot easier to hear me. So I thought I'd just answer a question. And it's a question that I keep getting asked. I've been asked it in the comments of a couple of videos, I've been asked it through the social medias, and I've been asked it face to face a couple of times as well. So I thought Seeing as so many people keep asking me it, I shall answer it in a video and then... I was going to say then nobody need to ask me again, but it means that the next meetup, I'm guaranteed to have everybody come across with a big grin on the face saying, Hey, what about this? Anyway, the question is, am I going to replace the Honda? The flying strawberry? The uh, CB500X that got written off in my little accident? And the answer is, not sure really. Mrs C isn't hugely fussed about riding, about going pillion. Um, it doesn't look like we'll be going on holiday anytime soon on the bike. Certainly not on this one, but on her bike. I don't think there's any need for me to have another touring bike. So, or an adventure bike, depending on what you thought it was. I mean. They sell it as an adventure bike, and to be fair, if you look at you know some of the uh, vloggers, Captain Cranky, for example, uh, who've got a CB500X, some of them take it off-road properly. They've done some quite major modifications to it first, though. Uh, but I saw it more as a, a comfortable tourer and good for Mrs. C. She liked it because it had a big seat rather than the razor blade on this one and with a top box as well it made it very comfortable to be on the back of it but I don't think at the minute unless Mrs C starts asking me to do it that there's any real reason for me to replace that I'm just enjoying this one for the time being now there is one thing that could change my mind uh, aside from Mrs C saying get another bike and that is if I decide to take on a project a restoration or something like that. If I see the right thing out there to restore, I might do that. So it's a possibility that I might get a second bike again. I have now reconfigured my garage, so it will be trickier to have two bikes in it. Still get two bikes in easily, maybe even three, but not side by side anymore. So it'll be a bit more awkward to get them in and out. I'll have to show you my new garage, won't I? Well, not new garage, but my new garage layout. But I suppose the thing that's making the biggest difference really, because there's no particular drive to get a bike other than, let's say a project would be, well, a fun project. I think the thing that's drawing me away from it is, I like to plan things really early. Some people say far too early. So when I bought my first house, or got my first mortgage in my early 20s I bought it with the intention of this, this house of doing it up and selling it within a few years because it really was a bit of a wreck and then when I got the second house my plan was I've now got a mortgage that's into six figures and I want to get rid of it as quickly as possible so there was a lot of overpaying and things like that on it to try and get it down and now my plans are retirement and I'm from that generation that doesn't get the nice final salary pensions anymore so everything you do on your pension really is down to you to do and I'm now thinking more about pensions not being particularly brilliant um, some people get really screwed over on pensions so thinking about other ways of how am I going to support myself 
Mrs C and my bike habit as I get a bit older because I'm in my mid 40s now in theory my uh, state pension kicks in at 68 so 22 years away it's a long way away really I suppose I'm closer to that than I am to the start of my career but not by much but when I look at my pension provision which isn't particularly brilliant because I started it too late I really need something else in there so I've been following this idea of the 4% rule I don't know if anybody's heard of it or not it's quite an interesting one and the 4% rule says that you need to work out how much money you can live on and you can retire when the amount you can live on is 4% of what you've got in the bank well not in the bank but if it's in the right type of investments which is uh, generally a spread of uh, the, uh, one of the indexes like the FTSE or something like that so thinking about it that way if you need £20,000 a year to live you can retire at any age in theory and the, the math supports this very well but you can retire at any age if you need 20 grand a year to live you can retire once you've got 25 times that in the bank so half a million pounds invested is what you need to safely be able to take 4% out every year and live on that inflation adjusted without your uh, quality of life ever going down you can actually go to a bit more than 4% uh, later on in life uh, if you look back at the the detail of this thing of the maths of this thing you find that in all but about two years of the last century if you'd have started your retirement uh, at a kind of normal age 55, 60, something like that and took 4% out every year that in all but two of those years you would actually die most likely with more money left than when you started so if you're retiring at kind of 60 then you can look at maybe taking 6% out per year it's all very mathematical and interesting but I suppose it becomes more interesting the older you get and when you start thinking about that the, uh, the logic is, is kind of interesting or the math is quite interesting because you start to think if I can take 4% out every year should I buy this thing let's say it's a, a new £10,000 bike something like that you think, should I do that because if I put £10,000 into, um, into the savings now the, um, the savings thing I use which is a Vanguard split over the uh, FTSE 500 has a growth of about 40 or 50 percent every five years it beats banks and things by loads and if you've got your ICES and one of your tax-free accounts even better so that ten thousand pounds could be fifteen thousand maybe in five years time and then in another 10 after that it could be up at well 22 and a half thousand after 10 years and after the 15 it could be up at maybe 33,000 and if you think well what's 4% of 33,000 well that's uh, what is it 1,320 pounds per year that's over 100 pound a month it's about 110 pounds a month so it gets you into this quandary You've got to be a bit wary because you'll never spend anything again. But it's got me into this quandary of, you know, do, do you spend 10 grand on a bike now? Or do you save that away? Um, knowing that that could be worth, in retirement, £110 a, uh, a month. Or if I retired at 66 instead of 61 on those numbers, because I'm 46 now. You know, that £110 a month, that could be worth... 160. And it, you know, it's substantial, isn't it? When it adds up, I mean, not just on the one bike sale, but over that period, it could be substantial amounts of money that you're talking about. So these kind of things are putting me off buying another bike right now. I mean, it's not going to put me off buying a bike ever, 
<laughs> but it's putting me off buying another bike right now when I don't need one. You know, when it's not... Um, I mean, this bike's got about 11,500 miles on it. You know, it's nearly brand new, isn't it? It's three years old. We're not going on holiday on one. So do I really need to, to spend that kind of money on it? If you're interested in that kind of stuff, I found out about it way too late, about 25 years too late. If I found out about it 25 years ago, then uh, I might be thinking about retiring in the next five years rather than in the next 20. But um, it was a colleague at work who started this much younger and probably is going to retire around the age I am now. Now, I say retire, that doesn't necessarily mean actually packing everything in. That just means getting to the point where you don't have to work. But you might well carry on. I mean, I enjoy what I do, so I'd probably carry on anyway. But I would carry on knowing that uh, I didn't have to. You know, it takes away all of that pressure, doesn't it? Of course, it doesn't matter at all, because I'm... Uh, I'm not going to reach that point <laughs> that I'm retiring particularly early because I don't have that pension provision. But hopefully I can get to the point by starting now where in 20 years I will. Anyway, that's how weird is that. I started off... I shouldn't freestyle these vlogs, really, should I? I started off as a... <laughs> as a... answering the question about the Honda and I end up talking about pension planning. <laughs> I'll stop now before I get onto it, something even weirder, like, I don't know, religion or, even worse, Brexit. <laughs> uh, never. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Ride safe. And if you are interested in looking that stuff up, by the way, just, just in case you are, if I've whetted your appetite, it's called the uh, FIRE movement. Financial independence. Retire early. I guess it would work better if fire was spelt wrong wouldn't it and it'd be financial independence early retirement but hey it isn't so th as i said thanks for watching right there and i'll talk to you all again soon